Chapter 24 deals with comparing means. So instead of just one sample mean, now we're going to have two independent samples and we're going to um, compare means by both looking at significance tests and confidence intervals. So the first question we're going to look at, and this is not the data from your class, I actually am using it from a, a previous year, but the question is, is there a difference between the mean resting pulse for high school males and females, and particularly 11th and 12th graders, because that's where the data came from. So um, what you might want to do first is pause this for a minute, and on your calculator, go ahead and enter this data, the pulse data. So you'll need in two different, um, two different columns, you'll want to do one for um, the male, male pulse data and one for female. You can actually do yours in L1 and L2 if you want to. I actually named a column male and well, female, that only lets you do five letters. So go ahead and take a minute to, to do that. So you should have paused that and, and entered all that information. So now what we're going to look at is actually how to answer the question, is there a difference? So we're going to, hold on just a second here. So first of all, I'm going to define the two means that I have. So mu sub n sub m is going to represent the mean resting pulse for 11th and 12th grade males, and mu sub f represents the mean resting pulse for 11th and 12th grade females. Then I need a hypothesis. So my null hypothesis is going to be that mu sub m equals mu sub f. And in words, the mean resting pulse is the same for 11th and 12th grade males and females. Now, by saying they're the same, I could also say mu sub m minus mu sub f is zero. So really I'm saying that the difference is zero. My alternative hypothesis, because of the question, the question asked, is there a difference? So my alternative will be mu sub m is not equal to mu sub f. They aren't the same. So um, again, depending on your question, you have to pay attention to whether or not it's going to be a right tail test, a left tail test, or a two-sided. And in this case, it's a two-sided. Just like before, now we have to check our conditions. Now it's not a random sample, but I think that my sample is typical of all 11th and 12th graders. And that may or may not be accurate, but we're going to go with that for now. Um, if it's not a random sample, then you need to make sure that your sample represents the population. So um, as long as you think that's reasonable, and you do need to at least mention that. Both of my samples are less than 10% of the population, so that's okay. The samples, both male and female, should be independent of each other. And um, the data appears roughly normal. Now I'm going to show you the graphs. There are no outliers, but 28, I think, was a female pulse. Seems a little low, so just to make a note of that. Now remember that for the, you always have to show your graphs. I did this on the computer, but you can see for the male and for the female, both of them you know, are, are somewhat normal shaped. I mean, this actually, the males looks a little more uniform than normal, but there's no big outliers or, um, or real problems or skewed data or anything. Again, this 28 looks a little low. Don't forget to always show your picture. So because the conditions are met, we can go ahead and um, do a test. So the test we're going to do is a two sample t test for the difference of the means. Now remember, um, the reason why we have to use a t-test is because we don't know the population standard deviation. So because we are using the sample standard deviation, then we have to use a t-test. So this is from your yellow sheet. The standardized test statistic that we use is going to be t. To find that, we do the statistic, which is the difference between the sample means minus the parameter, which is the, distant, the difference between um, the parameters, divided by the sample standard deviation. Now this comes right off, if you look at your yellow sheet, also down here, notice that for the statistic it says the difference of the sample means, which in this case would be x bar sub m minus x bar sub f, and your standard deviation of the statistic, we don't know sigma, so we're using s instead. So I, I have that data, so I'll be plugging that in, and this is what we end up with. Now one comment I want to make on here is mu sub m minus mu sub f. Now if you look back at our original hypothesis, we said that the difference, there is no difference, which would mean that this part right here equals zero. So we could say that this part is zero, so we don't even need to worry about this. We're just going to take this portion of it divided by 
our standard deviation. Now I actually um, calculated my, my statistics on a computer program. This was done on Fathom. So for the male, the, the mean, X bar for the mean, or for the males was 60. Um, there were nine, that's the count. You can see the, the key down here, the mean, the count, and the sample standard deviation. So that information is there for the males and females. So I'm just substituting the values. X bar sub M is 60. X bar sub F is 61.14 substituting in the standard deviation for the males and for the females and um, so that's just plugging it into the formula. When I do that I get T equals negative 0.24. Now for degrees of freedom, when we have two different samples one option is to use the smaller of your two n sub m minus one values. So for example in this case the smaller of the two samples was the males so nine minus one is eight so I'm safe to use eight for my degrees of freedom. Now that's if you're going to do it by hand. There's a really complicated formula in your in the book that you really don't need to use. This is fine to do. If you do it on the calculator, which I'll show you later, that will actually use a more accurate degrees of freedom and it use it calculates it for you. But this is okay if you need to do something by hand. So, I know my test statistic now is -0.24. And so if I need to, um, so now we need to look that up. And actually what we can do is just like we had a normal CDF, there's a, a T CDF. And if you do second distribution, you can find T CDF in the same menu that you found normal CDF. And you put in the left bound and the right bound, so negative 10 to the 99th because I'm looking for this region here and a right bound would be negative 0.24 and you can't see this on here but the degrees of freedom would be 8 and when you do that you get this answer 0 0.408 and you can go through those steps on your calculator I would recommend you do that so the reason why I'm shading both sides is because this was a two-sided test so remember you have to double the the tail values or the and to, to get your p-value so I need two times that value so two times 0 0.408 so I did 2 times 0.41, so I get 0.82, and that's my p-value for my test. So I calculate my test statistic, I see the probability of getting a test statistic that's that value, um, or more extreme, is 0.82. Well, that's a really high p-value. So I would say my conclusion, with such a large p-value as 0.82, we do not have enough evidence to claim a difference between resting pulse rates of 11th and 12th grade males and females. So let me show you on the calculator now. Um, I have all the screens there, um, but if you hit stat and go to test, and this time we are looking for a two sample t-test. So you'll choose that. Now I actually entered the data already. We actually have the data, not the statistics. So I entered my list um, for male and female, and you might have them in L1 and L2. Went down here to um, not equal to, because it was a two-sided test. Now you'll notice where they, they ask you pooled. It's always no. So for um, when you're doing means, test for the test for the means, always choose no. And uh, there would be some instances where in some cases you might have yes, but we won't. And calculate. And we get the values. Now you'll notice my T, my t a test statistic, negative 0.24. Notice my P value. Notice my degrees of freedom. Now these de this degree of freedom that they tell me is actually more accurate it's with a more complicated formula and um, but again we were okay and as a matter of fact we came up with the same test statistic and pretty much the same p-value when we did it um, with eight degrees of freedom notice the little down arrow that means there's more so you could scroll down if you wanted any more um, of the information that was listed there And again, here was a note I made. Um, this is more accurate degrees of freedom, but we were okay the way that we did that before. All right, now let's look at a confidence interval. So we're going to find a 95% confidence interval for the difference of resting pulse rates between 11th and 12th grade males and females. Now the conditions are the same, so they're already met. From your yellow sheet, to find our confidence interval, we take the statistic plus or minus the critical value times the standard deviation of the statistic. 
My statistic is the difference of the sample means, so x, x bar sub m minus x bar sub f, plus or minus. Now, if I'm doing it by hand, I'm going to do t star with 8 degrees of freedom, and then my um, sample standard deviation, which that's just from the formula, and that's on your yellow sheet. Remember, I showed you that a little bit ago, and if you need to you know, go back and watch part of that again, you can. So now I plug in my values, so I'm just substituting in values. Um, to find your T star with 8 degrees of freedom, remember we're doing a 95% confidence interval. So look at the bottom, and I don't have that on this, um, this cut and paste image, but the bottom of this column was 95%. And if you look at 8 degrees of freedom, they're over here on the left, you'll see 2.306. So that's how you find your critical value that goes there. Then you plug in these other values, and you get... Um, between negative 12.05 and, and positive 9.77. So what that means when you interpret, I am 95% confident that the true difference of the means of resting pulses between 11th and 12th grade males and females, mu sub m minus mu sub f, and um, sometimes if I'm not clear, I like to tell the way that I subtracted it, is between negative 12.05 and 9.77. Since zero is in the interval, there may be no difference between the males and females. Okay, notice that negative 12.05 would indicate that the males were had a, a smaller resting pulse, and a positive 9.77 would indicate that the males had a higher resting pulse rate. So it does cross over zero, which means it is possible that there is no difference between the males and females on your calculator. If you go stat test and now we're looking for a two sample T interval. So you have to keep going until you find it. So here it is, a two sample T interval. So I choose that. Now I again I like this, it saves my my information there, but I do need to change the confidence level. So I'm going to go down and do that. Whoops. And pool, remember, is no. And calculate. Now you'll notice here that um, we do get a different confidence interval. It's from negative 11 to 8.7. And the reason for that is because notice the degrees of freedom. So again, this does, um, ours was a conservative estimate, which is why we ended up with a wider interval. This is a little narrow interval. So it is better um, to use the calculator and to use the degrees of freedom that the calculator um, ca comes up with. However, it's okay if you have a situation where you have to do it by hand, um, for whatever reason, then it is okay to use the lesser of the two n minus ones. So just watch for that. Um, that should take care of it for, we've seen now um, a significance test, at least a two-sided one. You'd have to make the appropriate changes for one-sided, as well as a confidence interval um, for comparing two means.